I might have just found a really interesting way to change how we break our fasts and get better body composition out of it. Hear me out on this, it's pretty cool. All right, we know that when you're fasting, you're breaking down like your muscle tissue a little bit. And then when you break your fast, well, that kind of changes. Then the food that you ate goes into, of course, rebuilding. Well, what if we could rebuild at a faster rate right when we break a fast, allowing us to potentially build more muscle and have more protein synthesis and get better body composition results? Let's investigate a little bit. Hey, after this video, I do want to make sure you check out Zero Fasting. It's a fasting app. So if you're into intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting, you've probably heard of Zero. Well, the cool thing is I create a lot of content for Zero. So within their app, I have special pieces of content that I don't even talk about on my YouTube channel and all that cool stuff. So there is a link down below if you want to check out Zero. They're an entirely free app. They do have a paid version as well called Zero Plus. I'll put a link to that as well if you want to check that out. But anyhow, it's worth taking a look at because it's allowing you to have a fasting timer, but also a sense of community that goes along with it. So highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're getting started with fasting and you wanna be able to kind of have that community feel. So there's a link down below to check them out. And a big thank you to Zero for supporting this channel as well. All right, let's break this down. When you are fasting, you are largely in a catabolic mode. That's normal. That means your body is breaking down muscle. Okay, but it doesn't mean that you're just wasting muscle. It means that your body is breaking down like, weak, sort of unusable, like non-functioning proteins within your muscle. It, it's stuff that needs to get recycled anyway. Fasting is just sort of accelerating it. Now, what happens is those pieces of proteins get broken down into amino acids, and those amino acids float through the bloodstream, and they do some things, and sometimes they go to the liver for energy. But ultimately, what we'd love to do is be able to take those amino acids and build new muscle with them, right? Imagine this, okay, your muscle is like a brick house. You go into fasting mode and it's like a storm hits the muscle and all the weak parts of that house just fall apart. The house kind of crumbles. Well, you're left with components of the house that are totally busted up, but you're also left with a good number of bricks that could be used to build other muscle. Well, while we're fasting, we can't do that. We can't magically take proteins that break down from our calf and rebuild them into our bicep during a fast but theoretically we could after we break our fast. And the reason that that happens is because after a fast, we have a spike in what is called mTOR because we've, eating, we've eaten something. When you eat protein, it triggers mTOR. mTOR turns off the muscle wasting. And all of a sudden, all those amino acids that are floating around through your bloodstream as a result of muscle protein breakdown, suddenly have a blueprint and a place to go. Because when we spike mTOR, we ultimately improve what is called ribosome biogenesis. I want you to think of the ribosome as like a robot. And this robot takes amino acids and he puts them into the right place to build proteins, to build your muscle. Without that ribosome, well, you basically don't have a robot to build the proteins. It's just like amino acids floating everywhere. So once you actually spike mTOR by eating some food, suddenly you have a robot there that can actually allocate amino acids to the right places. There's a problem though. That robot isn't all that fast, okay? He's not that fast at protein synthesis. It turns out that, well, in order to spike mTOR, you need something called leucine. And leucine is an amino acid that's in essential amino acids that can really get this robot working really, really fast. But that kind of begs the question. So at the end of a fast, should I just have some essential amino acids? Should I just have some leucine? Because clearly that gets the robot working fast. Well, here's the problem. It gets the robot working fast, but if you don't have any other amino acids floating around, what good is it? The robot can't build anything if he doesn't have bricks. So you have to really be consuming protein along with it. So the short answer, and I'm gonna break this down more, is essential amino acids work very, very well at the end of a fast as long as they are alongside your post-fast meal. There's a study that was published in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition. Okay, it took a look at uh, exercise subjects and it found that when they had a protein shake after a workout, they had an increase in, of course, the anabolic response. They had protein synthesis. When they added essential amino acids alongside it or leucine along with their protein shake, it 4X'd the protein synthesis. It 4X'd it. They had four times as much protein synthesis. So this same thought process applies with fasting. When we break our fast, normally we eat some lean chicken or you know, maybe some lean fish or something like that, and that's great, we get some protein. But what if we can spike mTOR even higher so we get more protein synthesis at the end of a fast? 
You see, one of the ways that people would do this before is they say, at the end of a fast or at the end of a workout, I'm going to spike my insulin by having some carbohydrates along with my protein. But you can't just do that with fasting. You can't just spike your insulin by having carbohydrates at the end of a fast because it throws off your entire electrolyte balance because all your electrolytes flood into the cell too at the end of a fast because of some certain refeeding syndromes. So point being, essential amino acids could make it so that you're getting more out of the protein that you're breaking your fast with without actually having to increase your digestive load. What if you could, and this is purely hypothetical, get the effects of having 60 grams of protein while only eating 20. If essential amino acids 4X the protein synthesis, then that means at the end of the fast, when I am sensitive and my gut is weak, I could get away with having 20 grams of protein and basically get like 60 or 80 out of it by coupling it with amino acids like that. Because I'm spiking the mTOR spike and able to do more with less. So then we have to kind of lean into, well, how much should I have? Does more leucine trigger a bigger effect? Well, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition took a look at just this, and they found that there is a little bit of a dose-dependent relationship up to a certain point. They found that up to five to 10 grams of leucine uh, elicited a dose-dependent effect. But once you hit this top end, you didn't get more effect, meaning, once I went past 10 grams of added leucine, it wasn't like I was getting an exponentially more powerful effect. Okay, so what they did is they gave subjects two different drinks. They gave one group uh, amino acids that had 1.87 grams of leucine and another group that had 3.5 grams of leucine. Well, the group that had the 3.5 grams of leucine had 33% more muscle protein synthesis. So clearly there is a dose dependent relationship. What I would recommend when you are breaking a fast is along with your 20, 30, 40 grams of protein that you have, try giving yourself three to five grams of essential amino acids or leucine, like 10 grams of amino acids, trying to get three to five of it from leucine. So try to find an essential amino acid that has extra fortification of leucine. Basically what you're doing is you're spiking your protein synthesis without having to spike your insulin. That means you can stay in ketosis, not spike your insulin, or you have a small spike, but still be able to get more protein synthesis at the end of a fast. That is ideal for people that are trying to change their body composition. So anyhow, it's just a fun hack. A little bit of EAAs along with your post-fast protein. Hey, pretty easy fix. I'll see you tomorrow.